first of all, uh, explain to you why Europeans were inferior in math and the kind of blunders they made. See, they did not have even elementary arithmetic properly. They had some Roman arithmetic, but it was quite primitive. And therefore, they imported their elementary math. And the key point I want to make is that they had difficulties in understanding the math they imported. And therefore, they made blunders. Europeans themselves abandoned their native Roman arithmetic because it was very bad. And they adopted what they call Arabic numerals or algorithms from the Latin name of Al Khwarizmi, who wrote Hisab al Hin, that is Indian arithmetic. And their lack of understanding is clear from the very terms such as zero. So, zero, as you know, is uh, from the Arabic sifra, as this Oxford English Dictionary tells us. And sifra or cipher, as it is called, means mysterious code. All right, a secret code. So what is mysterious? Roman arithmetic was additive, like coins or counters, pebble arithmetic. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, West did not understand it, and therefore they passed a law against zero, Florentine law against zero in 1299. Now, zero re relates to negative numbers. So nine minus nine is zero. But Roman arithmetic had no negative numbers. So you are dealing with pebble arithmetic. There is no such thing as a negative pebble. So Europeans were confused about negative numbers. From the time of Fibonacci, I am leaving out uh, Gerbert, from the time of Fibonacci's Liber Abaki to Augustus de Morgan. And somebody understood, somebody did not. De Morgan did not understand. So he was a very influential professor at, from University College London. And he declared negative numbers impossible. So you see, he says such a stupid thing. He says that 10 minus 20 plus 50 is impossible. All right, you can have 10 plus 50 minus 20 because negative numbers are impossible. So this is uh, what uh, De Morgan said. And this he is writing in the 19th century. And uh, he is a very influential professor of mathematics. In fact, he went a step further. See, in 1898, he said that belief in witches, he said student, must reject the definition that minus a is less than zero. It is less than nothing. And he said it is astonishing that the human intellect should ever have tolerated such an absurdity. And they should have outlived the belief in judicial astrology and the existence of witches, either of which is 10,000 times more possible. So this is Augusta de Morgan talking about negative numbers. So if you were right, you should stop teaching negative numbers in school. But my point is that he did not understand negative numbers because negative numbers were an import and therefore he buffed them because he tried to correlate it with his own cultural and understanding of numbers as counters, coins, and so on, pebbles. So algebra was imported from Al Khwarizmi, his book Algebra Wal Mukabla. Mukabla is a contest which is like an equation. So he used it to solve equations and he translated the work of Brahmagup on polynomials and solved linear, he, Brahmagup solved quadratic equations also. Al Khwarizmi was limited to linear equations. Now you have the word third. The word third, according to uh, the Oxford English Dictionary, this is from the unabridged Oxford English Dictionary, it means uh, depth, thirdeth, depth. Now why is square root of two depth? I mean, it's a bit amazing that it is depth. And why do you call it depth? So the point is that in the Indian Shulva Sutra, you have square root of two is the diagonal of a unit square. If you have a unit square, you draw the diagonal, it is square root of two. But the word karna also means here, here. So bad karna was translated as bad here, which is depth. <laughs> so it goes on like that. These are the kind of blunders that Europeans made about the most elementary mathematics imaginable. Negative numbers, square roots, sign. The word sign is from the, again, I'll give you the Oxford English Dictionary. The word sign is from the word jabe. This is jabe, my pocket. All right. And uh, why, what has it got to do with uh, pockets? Because it is from the Sanskrit term for it is ardhajya, the half cord, and jiva. So jiva was rendered in Arabic as jiva, 
because there is no word sound in Arabic. And uh, the Toledo translators, you see, it was written as just the consonantal skeleton J and B, like you do please in SMS, just PLS, just, just leave out the vowels. So uh, the word J was used and they translated it as sinus, hold, and therefore sign. We are still using it. And the point is, you're not just using it. There is a conceptual error. So the very word trigonometry says it is about triangles, but actually it is about circles. So I asked this question in my test. So uh, in pre-test, this is my pre-test for my calculus without limits course. So I asked students to define sine of x. They will say opposite side by hypotenuse. Then I asked them what is sine of 92 degrees. So you can't have a 92 degree angle in a right angle triangle. So they don't know what to do. And I said, you don't know, but my calculator knows. So my calculator tells me that sine of 92 degrees is this much. So they don't know, and they have got a conceptual error about what the meaning of the sine function is. So this is the kind of thing that happens because this is how the West learned it. This is why the West calls it trigonometry. In India, the sign is always in the chapter on the circle. So I can go on like that. So this, uh, I have an article here. It's a link to it. It has got a lot more details on pre-colonial appropriations of Indian uh, Ganit, epistemic lessons. It's about probability also and so on. I won't go into it. Please check it out later. After I put it up, it's available on the net. So that's enough of uh, jokes. Let's get down to business.